In this video, I'm going to discuss tyramine-induced hypertension or hypertensive crisis, one of the two major but avoidable risks with MAOIs. The second is serotonin syndrome, which will be discussed in a separate video. Taking MAOIs are contraindicated with the consumption of food containing tyramine because of the increased risk of blood pressure rising or hypertensive crisis. Tyramine can cause elevated blood pressure when taken in sufficient quantities in all individuals. However, tyramine is degraded by monoamine oxidase, or MAO, the enzyme that MAO inhibitors inactivate, and thus the level of tyramine needed to raise blood pressure in individuals on MAO inhibitors is much lower and can be achieved with consumption of certain foods. Listed here are foods that commonly contain dangerous levels of tyramine. While this is not a complete list, the vast majority of foods are safe for consumption. This is because tyramine is not typically found naturally in food. Rather, it is produced by bacteria and typically problematic in aged, rot, or spoiled foods, allowing for significant bacterial production of tyramine. To reduce the risk of tyramine-induced hypertension, one should eat fresh foods and research tyramine content of foods they enjoy while understanding the risk of tyramine levels may vary from what is cited for various reasons, including a difference in the age of the foods cited in their research versus the foods the patient desires to consume. The mechanism by which tyramine causes a raise in blood pressure is through entering the neuroepinephrine reuptake receptors and displacing neuroepinephrine from the cell. Thus, one way to reduce the risk of MAO-induced hypertension is through consumption of neurotriptyl or disipramine. Both neurotriptyline and disipramine significantly block tyramine uptake from neuroepinephrine reuptake receptors through their neuroepinephrine reuptake inhibition at relatively small doses. 50 mg daily of neurotriptyline and 100 mg daily for disipramine. However, these medications can cause side effects, particularly when they are first started, including increased fatigue, which is typically improved at higher doses, and worsening orthostatic dizziness, which improves over the course of days to weeks. Additionally, while disipramine is associated with weight loss in some individuals, neurotriptyline is more commonly associated with weight gain. A second method of reducing the risk of tyramine-induced hypertension is through taking selegiline in its sublingual or transdermal form, i.e. MSAM. MAOIs swallowed orally enter the gut directly where they inhibit a large portion of gut MAO or monoamine oxidase. When selegiline is taken as a patch or sublingually, the drug is diluted in the systemic blood supply and only a small portion reaches the gut MAO. Since gut MAO is responsible for degrading most of the tyramine consumed in food, selegiline in its sublingual and transdermal forms are less likely to induce tyramine-induced hypertension. However, since gut MAO inhibition occurs, a tyramine-restricted diet must still be followed. Tyramine-induced hypertension typically presents within 30 minutes and commonly within 15 minutes of consuming foods with significant levels of tyramine. Common presenting signs include palpitations or the feeling that one's heart is racing, sweating, chest discomfort, pain or pressure, shortness of breath, headache, abdominal or belly pain, and in rare cases, changes in mentation. People who are experiencing any of these symptoms should attempt to measure their blood pressure and obtain emergency medical services, as even a normal or mildly elevated blood pressure in the setting of these symptoms may be due to a much higher blood pressure that the monitor is not able to read. Additionally, patients who have consumed or possibly consumed a large amount of tyramine should seek emergency medical services. Care from an emergency medical provider should not be delayed for one to check their blood pressure. In the absence of these symptoms, patients may want to check their blood pressure after a possible tyramine exposure. Patients may be told by their providers that certain blood pressure should trigger a visit to the emergency room. For example, a systolic blood pressure of 180 or higher in an otherwise healthy young individual with no baseline hypertension. In such cases, it is advisable to check on one's blood pressure every 5 to 10 minutes until blood pressure is normalized for 30 minutes. Blood pressure typically normalizes within 2 hours but may take longer for some individuals. Patients may also notice that their heart rate may speed up over 100 beats per minute or slow down under 60 beats per minute. When monitoring blood pressure, guidelines from the manufacturer and from the American Heart Association should be followed. Rescue medications in these events may sometimes be used. Some patients may benefit from having a medication, typically a short-lived, fast-acting calcium channel blocker, as some other blood pressure-lowering medications, such as beta blockers, may pose additional risk that they can immediately take after identifying that they are having a hypertensive crisis secondary to tyramine consumption. However, these medications pose a risk of dropping blood pressure too much and can cause devastating damage as a result, including a stroke or cardiac arrest. Use of such medications warrants a discussion between a patient and their provider and should never be used as a replacement for seeking emergency medical services. Overall, severe tyramine-induced hypertension is rare, but patients should still exercise caution with the foods they eat while on an MEO inhibitor.